Welcome to this week's virtual drasha. This week we have the incredible privilege to read Parshas Toldos, and the Parsha opens up in what appears to be a relatively straightforward way. The Eila Toldos Yitzchak ben Avram, Avraham holy des Yitzchak. These are the generations of Yitzchak, the son of Avram. Avram birthed. Holid, he birthed Yitzchak. And so the Mepharshim ask a variety of different questions on this Pasuk, but on the most basic level, it's a straightforward Pasuk, creating a connection, a relationship between Avram and Yitzchak. But the problem, of course, is we already know that Yitzchak is the son of Avram. We already know that Avram is the father of Yitzchak. We've been introduced to this relationship already in last week's parasha. Already, the truth is, two weeks ago in parasha Zvayira, we already learned about this. So why does the Torah feel the need to reinforce this? And the great Sadik. Rav Yechiel of Alexander, Zechar of Yitzchak, David Kadosh lived from 1853 to 1910, says something absolutely amazing. He explains that the Pasuk is coming to highlight the great humility of Avraham and Yitzchak. That is, let's work backwards. If you were to ask Yitzchak Avinu Yitzchak, what's your greatest accomplishment in life? What's your greatest accomplishment? Yitzchak Avinu would have said, my greatest accomplishment, Yitzchak ben Avraham. My greatest accomplishment? is that I am Avram Avinu's son. That's what I feel is my greatest accomplishment. I, Yitzchak, you didn't choose which family to be born into, but Yitzchak Avinu said in all humility, my greatest accomplishment is not something I did for myself, but it's the fact that I'm a son of Avram Avinu. And if you were to ask Avram Avinu, Avram, what was your greatest accomplishment? The Avram would have said, Avraham holy as Yitzchak. My greatest accomplishment? I gave birth to a Yitzchak. As such, said from Alexander, something so beautiful that the Pasuk is simply here to attest to the humility of the first two patriarchs. Yitzchak thinking his greatest accomplishment was Avram, Avram thinking that his greatest accomplishment was Yitzchak. But I think that the Rebbe is coming to teach us something a little bit deeper. The Pasuk is coming to teach us something a little bit deeper. Now, there's a beautiful marshal by the Dubna Magid. And the Dubna Magid tells a story, as he often did, about a young man who felt he had no mazel. No mazel. This guy was down on his luck. His parnasa was going terribly. He could not find a wife, no matter how many dates, how many people he went out with. He was unable to find his bashert. So this individual decided, you know what? I once heard, I once learned that every person has a maloch. Every person has a ministering angel. And so this individual, this guy, decided that he was going to go out and find his maloch. And I'm going to find out. I'm going to meet my ministering angel. I'm going to find out why do I have no mazel? Why do I have no luck? Why do I have no ma- You know, we translate mazel as luck, but the truth is it means something much more profound. Why do I have no mazel? Let me find my ministering angel and find out why I have no mazel. So he, see, he sets out on his journey. And as he's walking, he passes by a tree. And the tree was incredibly withered. Looks like it's about to die. And he sees that she's looking around the tree, what's going on, and the tree begins to talk with him. Remember, it's a marshal from the Dubna Magid. The tree begins to talk to him. The tree says, Ay, 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 I don't know what's going on. I feel so sick. I'm all withered up. I can't go in and produce fruit. I have no idea. No idea what's going on. So the man says to the tree, Don't worry, you're in luck. I'm going to my maloch to find out about my mazel. And if I find my malach, I'll ask about your mazel as well. Maybe he knows your ma- maybe he knows your malach, or maybe all the malachim work collaboratively together. They have a WhatsApp group. Whatever it is, I'll, when I find my malach and ask about my mazel, I'll ask about your mazel as well. He continues down on the journey, and as he's still looking for his malach, he stumbles across a young woman, a princess, and he finds the princess sitting all alone in an open field, sobbing heavily into her hands. He says, "Excuse me." Is everything all right? And she begins to sob. And she explains that she is a princess from a very special family, the daughter of the king, but yet she can't seem to find a suitable husband. She can't find someone who is going to be mashlum, who is going to complete her. She can't find her bashert. The man says, I hear, I hear what you're saying. I'm on the way to my maloch to find out about my mazel, to find out what's going on. I'm happy to ask about you. Okay, so the man continues journeying, and Baruch Hashem, finally, he meets his maloch. He meets his ministering angel. But interesting enough, this guy was a very empathic, compassionate individual. So he begins to ask the maloch about the tree. And he begins to go and ask the maloch about the princess. And the maloch, Baruch Hashem, has all of the answers. 
So the Malach, so he's, right, so he gets, oh, so he asks about the tree, asks about the princess, and the Malach tells him all what the tree needs, what the princess needs, and the truth is, the guy becomes so wrapped up in the needs of the tree, the needs of the princess, that he forgets to ask the Malach about his own compromised mazel. So he quickly runs back to the tree, he says, tree, tree, I have great news, I found out what the problem is. You see, there's buried treasure underneath you, tree, and the treasure is interrupting. It's, it's, it's a barrier between your roots and the soil. So all someone needs to do is go ahead and dig up the treasure, dig up the treasure, and Baruch Hashem, then your roots will be able to be nourished from the soil all around you. You'll be a happy, healthy tree bearing fruit. The tree says, Givaldic, incredible. Can you do me a favor? Can you go ahead and dig up the treasure? And it's a zen and a zen and everybody benefits. You dig up the treasure, you keep the treasure, you'll become fabulously wealthy and I'll be able to be a healthy tree. And the man says, ah, I wish I could help. I wish I could help, but I'm too busy to help you unearth the treasure. I'm looking for my mazel. Runs all away from the tree. Finds the princess. Princess, princess, stop crying. I asked the Malach, he has all the answers. Right? The Malach says, your problem with your Shiduchim is that you're only looking for royalty. It's often an issue. Right? We're all looking for royalty. You're looking for royalty. You think that because you're a princess, you could only marry a prince. But it's not true. It's not true. In fact, you are such a special woman that even if you marry the most common of people, you will elevate your husband to a lofty and elevated status. You're looking in the wrong pool. All you need to do is marry a regular, nice guy. And you will enable, you will make him great. The princess tries her eyes. She looks at this young man and she says, Great, will you marry me? Will you marry me? To which the young man responds, I would love to, but I'm too busy looking for my mazel. And the Dubna Magid says, in such a beautiful and profound insight, the treasure was at hand but he was too busy looking for his mazel. The wife, the Eishas Chayel, was at hand, but he was too busy looking for his mazel. Says the Dubnu Magid, that sometimes in life we get so preoccupied with looking for something else, with looking for our mazel, with looking for the treasure, with looking for the bracha, with looking for fulfillment, that we forget to see all of the beautiful brachos that are all around us each and every day. And perhaps that's the Rebbe of Alexander was trying to highlight over here as well that the greatness of Avram and Yitzchok as espoused in this Pasuk, Avram Avinu had many accomplishments, many incredible accomplishments. But if you were to ask him about what's his crown jewel accomplishment, it's a Yitzchok. He appreciated the bracha, the accomplishment that he had right in front of him. And if you ask Yitzchok, what was your accomplishment? Yitzchok Avinu had many accomplishments as well. But he appreciated the bracha of having a father of having a loving and attentive father. You see, the Pasik is not just expressing their humility. The Pasik is expressing the koach of an Avraham and the Yitzchak to appreciate the brachos they had right in front of them. You see, it would have been easy for both of them to get totally lost, to forget about what's in front of you because these are global personalities. These are global forces. These are people going to change the world. And if I'm going to change the world, I don't have time for the stuff right in front of me. But this was the koach of Avraham. He changed the world. But he never forgot about the bracha right inside of his house. And this was the greatness of Yitzchak. He changed the world, but he never forgot about the bracha of having a saintly, loving, and attentive father. And that, says the Dubna Magid, is the message. We spend our lives looking for treasure. We spend our lives looking for mazel. We spend our lives looking for bracha. And we often don't even see the beautiful things that are right in front of us. Rosh Chodesh Kislev is upon us. Erev Shabbos, Rosh Chodesh, Kislev, going into Shabbos. And Kislev is the month of miracles. And often when we think about miracles, we think about dramatic, overwhelming things, splitting of the sea, man falling from the sky, conquering of nations. Hanukkah, Kislev is miracles also. But you know what the dominant miracle of Kislev is? It's a little jug of oil remaining lit. Right, the Yom Tov of Hanukkah, the miracles of Kislev are not focused on Kriyas Yom, the splitting of the sea. But the whole essence of this month, the whole essence of the Yom Tov of Hanukkah, is the ability to see the little miracles that occur within our lives each and every day. To take stock of the little miracles, to take stock of the everyday blessings that all too often we take for granted. 
Eile told us Yitzchak ben Avram. Yitzchak Avinu never lost sight of the brach of having a father. Avraham holy as Yitzchak and Avram never lost sight of the bracha of having a son. Rosh Chodesh offers us a reset. Rosh Chodesh offers us an opportunity to recalibrate. Too often in life we get carried away with what's next. What's next? What adventure? What excitement? What acquisition? And there is an important meat of what's next. There is to be a growth-oriented person. We certainly speak about that a lot. Being a growth-oriented person. And yes, being a what's next person can be very profound. But you have to temper your what's next personality with also appreciating what is now. What are the brachos I have now in front of me? You know, last Shabbos on, on Rosh Chodesh Benching, we asked that Kaddish Baruch Hu for a month that is filled with all kinds of blessings. Have we ever stopped for a moment to reflect on the fact that maybe we already have many of those blessings? Maybe our Kaddish Baruch Hu has already answered those tefillos in so many different ways, but perhaps we've just been a little bit too busy to take notice. Eile told us Yitzchak ben Avram, Avram only this Yitzchak. Aram and Yitzchak teach us to appreciate the brachos we have right in front of us. The young man from the Dubna Magid's Marshal had opportunity for happiness with a beautiful wife, had opportunity for wealth with beautiful treasure. He had all the opportunities in the world, but he was too busy looking for his mazel instead of appreciating the mazel he had right in front of him. In this new month, may we be Zolcha Mir Hashem to be the beneficiary of beautiful miracles, dramatic miracles, national miracles, Mashiach Dika miracles, Geula miracles. But at the same time, maybe also be Zoha to Merat Hashem, find the koach and the wisdom to acknowledge, to appreciate, and to give thanks for the miracles we already have. Wishing everyone a good Chodesh and a beautiful Shabbos Kodesh.